Okay, good day everyone. So, um, I'm Miss Roslyn Villaruz and ako po yung magdi-discuss dito sa ating Mojo 6 for our Civil Service um, Examination Review Program by um, Batas for Everyone which tackles about the data interpretation. Okay, so magbibigay lang ako ng brief introduction. Ano ba yung ginagawa natin sa data interpretation? Okay, so, data interpretation is simply, okay, it is the process of making sense out of a collected data na kung saan yung data na yun ay na-process na natin. Okay, so this collection may be presented in various forms like your graphs, okay, like uh, bar graphs, line charts, or pie charts, and also, it can also be um, presented in tabular forms, in table forms, and other similar similar forms, which needs an interpretation of some kind. So, here, we will learn about um, data interpretation with the help of many important techniques, okay, doon sa mga um, tanong na nakalagay doon sa ating um, civil service exam um, reviewer. Okay, and we will see also how we can make sense of a, of a simple number, of a simple data, okay, from graphs and from our um, charts. Okay, so we shall learn to use it uh, to solve the most common questions po na madalas lumalabas doon sa ating uh, civil service exam. So, again, um, we can encounter here bar chart, line chart, tabular form, um, pie chart, and so on. Okay, so let's start with our question number one. Okay. For our first question, okay, the following bar chart shows the trend of foreign direct investments or your FDI into Philippines from all over the world. As we can see, Sabi niya dito sa ating instructions, um, yung bar chart na to o yung tinatawag nating bar graph ay gagamitin po natin, okay, so gagamitin natin sa question 1 hanggang question number 5. So mahalaga na um, um, aralin muna natin yung ating uh, bar graph before tayo mag-proceed, okay, before tayo mag-proceed sa mga different questions. So, Ito po yung ating bar graph, which is a pictorial representation of data. Okay, this is a in form of bars or buildings on a graph. So, ito po yung mga bars natin. Sa ating x-axis ay yung ating years. Sa ating y-axis ay yun po yung ating FDI in million pesos. Okay, so ito yung trend. Okay, ito yung ating aaralin at um, yung questions na 1 to 5 ay um, tungkol po dito sa bar chart nito. Okay, so for question number 1, the question is, what was the ratio of investment in 1997 over the investment in 1992? Okay, so kapag ganito yung tanong, okay, ang hinahanap lang natin is, um, Ano nga ba yung um, na figure natin sa 1997 as a factor of 1992 investment? So, first, hanapin natin yung value ni 1997. So, for my 1997, I have 31.36. Okay, let's use the pen. Okay. For my 1996, in 1997 rather okay for my 1997 this um pagpasensya niyo na ang aking sulat okay i have 31.36 and for my 1992 okay hinahanap lamang po niya yung ratio Okay, ratio ng ating investment from 1997 at saka 1992. So, therefore, ang gagawin lamang po natin dito ay ipag-divide lang po natin yung ating um, investment okay, from 1997 at 1992. So, yung ating 1992, kung makikita nyo dito sa ating graph, ay yan po ay 5.7. Okay, that is 5.7. 
Okay, so that would be, okay, the ratio will be equal to, okay, 31.36 over 5.7. The ratio will be equal to 5.50. Okay, so this would be our answer for your question number one. At hanapin natin yung 5.50 doon sa ating um, doon sa ating choices. So, ito yung mga choices. So, as you can see, meron tayong letter A, 5.50. Therefore, this is our correct answer. Okay. So, yan po yung um, solution kung paano natin sagutin si question number 1. Okay. Okay, for number 2, the question is, what is the absolute difference in the FDI or your foreign direct investment of Philippines in between 1996 and 1997? So, this is a very simple question. We just, um, to get the correct answer, we just subtract po yung ating um, foreign direct investment sa 1997 at saka 1996. So, ang gagawin po natin ay, First, identify muna natin kung ano yung ating 1997 FDI at 1996. For our 1997, ang ating FDI ay 31.36. For our 1996, I have 24.23. Okay, so again, simply, we just subtract po. So, I have here my 1997, which is equal to... 31.36 and my 19.96 which is equal to 24.23 I will just simply subtract them to get the correct answer so that is 31.36 minus 24.23 I will have 7 point okay, that will be 7.13 so, the answer po, okay, kung ano yung absolute difference, okay, yung difference nung ating FDI ni 1997 at saka 1996 ay 7.13. So, the answer will be letter B. Okay? For our question number 3, for all the years mentioned, so I have 1992 hanggang 1997, what is the average okay, of the FDI? Okay, so, ang hahanapin po natin ay yung mean or yung ating um, average. So, ang formula po for average is the sum of all our entries divided, po, divided by the number of the entries po na meron tayo. So, in this um, question, ipag-a-add ko lamang po yung FDI natin for each year and then i-divide natin siya sa 6 dahil po meron tayong 6 na taon. Okay, so I have here, okay, pag a add natin yung ating um, 5.7 plus 10.15 plus 12.16 plus 10.22 plus 24.23 plus 31.36 okay kunin natin yung sum and then we will divide it by 6 okay so pag ipinag-add natin yan okay gamit tayo ng calculator add natin pero sa um uh, uh, mismo exam, hindi po tayo pwedeng makagamit ng calculator. So, uh, i-compute po natin siya manually. So, I have 5.7 plus 10.15 plus 12.16 plus 10.22 plus 24.23 plus 31.36. Ang aking sum ay 93.82. Okay, so, ito po yung sum, 93.82, divide natin sa 6, my average will be, okay, divided by 6, that would be 15.6366, okay? 
So, repeating number na po siya doon. Ang gagawin po natin ay um, ating i-round off sa two decimal places. So, this is, this is 15.64. Look for the correct answer in the choices po. So, I have letter D. Okay, so letter D is our correct answer for this number. Okay? Question number four. Okay, which year exhibited the highest growth in FDI in Philippines over the period shown? So if we will examine the question, it does not uh, talk about the highest FDI but it talks about the highest growth. So, kahit saan daw po yung may pinakamataas na um, uh, pagbabago or pagtaas ng ating FDI. So, titignan po natin doon sa ating, um, di, dito sa ating graph. As we can see, okay, the FDI in 1996, okay, more than doubles over that of 1995. So, no other year po ay ganito yung uh, growth. So, ibig sabihin, yung ating, um, yung ating answer is 1996. So, the correct answer for question number 4 is letter D, okay, which is 1996. For question number 5, what was Philippines total FDI for the period shown in the figure? Again, this is a very simple and easy to answer question kasi ang kailangan lang po natin gawin ay, okay, we need to look for the sum lang po nung ating mga FDI for every year because we are only looking for the total foreign direct investment. So, we just add 5.7, 10.15, 12.16, 10.15, 12.16, 24.23, and 31.36. And kung maalala ninyo, inad na rin natin tong lahat kanina para makuha yung average dun sa question number 3. So, pag pinag-add natin tong lahat, ang ibibigay niyang sagot ay 93.82. So, our correct answer for this uh, number, for question number 5, is letter A. Okay? So, we just add okay, all the figures, all the numbers po nung um, FDI natin sa lahat ng taon. Okay? Okay, so uh, we're done with the first five questions. Now, let's move on to four questions, six to eight, wherein uh, we will be dealing with a pie chart. Okay, so kung titignan natin yung pie chart ay isang bilog na parang nahati-hati lamang po, okay, like uh, pizza. Okay, so the following pie chart shows the sources of funds in millions. Your funds is measured in millions to be collected by the DPWH for its phase 2 projects. We need to study the pie chart first and answer the question that follow. So this is our pie, pie chart. Okay, ayan po. Uh, yung angle po nito ay 360 degrees. So, uh, meron iba't ibang kulay which pertains doon sa different funds, okay, differ, different um, branches or parts na pupuntahan ng funds. Okay, so po, ang pinakamalaki dito ay yung ating market borrowing. Okay, sunod yung external assistance and then yung SPVS, yung toll at saka annuity. Okay, so let's answer Question number six. Okay, question number six. Near about 20% of the funds are to be arranged through. Okay, so it's just like, um, it's not a question. Okay, pero, okay, ang tinatanong lang niya, naman niya dito ay, alin po sa mga funds, okay, ang nagko-consist nung 20%, okay, nung 20%, saan mapupunta yung 20% ng funds natin? Okay, so eto lamang ko yung pagpipilian natin. So, how do we answer this type of question? First, we need to look for the total. Okay, for the total of the funds na meron ang DPWH. So, ang gagawin natin ay ipag-a-add po muna natin. Okay, i-a-add natin lahat ng values dito para makuha natin yung total. Okay, so how uh, how do we do that? We, um, again, we add lahat yon. Okay, we use the pen. Okay, I will use the black. So I will uh, I have 29 952 
plus 11,486 plus 5,252 plus 4,910 plus 6,000. Okay? The sum of these values po ay which correspond to 57,600. Okay? So, this is the total, okay, nung funds po na meron si DPWH. Now, hahanapin daw po natin yung saan ba, okay, saan ba ilalagay yung 20% ng funds. So, ang gagawin natin na next step, dahil na total na natin, imumultiply po natin, okay, yung 20% doon sa 57,600. So, we will look for the amount that correspond to 20%. So, that would be, okay, the 20% of 57 I, sorry, that's 57 we will look for the 20% of 57,600 so how will we look for the 20% 20, 20 of 57,600 we just multiply 57,600 times 0.20 okay, so that's 57,600 times 0.20 Okay, so I have 57,600 times 0.20. That would be equal to 11,520. So, ito po yung 20%. Okay, so after natin makuha yung value ng 20%, okay, ng funds, hanapin po natin yung pinakamalapit. Okay, hanapin natin yung pinakamalapit sa kanya. Okay, so kung makikita natin dito sa ating um, values, okay, ang pinakamalapit po ay yung, yung ating amount na pertaining to external assistance. So that is 11,486. Okay, it is the nearest. That is why this is the correct answer. So, 20% of the funds will be allocated to external assistance. Okay? So, the correct answer is external assistance. Okay? So, next question. Question number 7. Okay? If DPWH could receive a total of 9% thousand six hundred ninety five uh, pesos that this is in millions as external assistance by what percent approximately should it increase the market borrowing to arrange for the shortage of funds okay so um ang gagawin natin kukunin muna natin yung ating shortage of funds arranged through external assistance. So, that would be, okay, yung ating external assistance ay 11. Okay. So, our external assistance, hanapin muna natin yung ating shortage. Ayan. Let's, um, let, let S will be your shortage. So, that is equal to, okay, external assistance, 11,000, okay, 486, magkano daw po yung natanggap? Okay, that is 9,695, okay? We get the difference, ang difference po niyan ay 1,791, okay? So, this is the shortage po. Okay, doon sa external assistance. Okay, so magkano yung i-increase natin? Okay, increase natin required in market borrowing. This is the required, okay, na ating i-increase doon sa market borrowing. That is 1,791. Okay, is this the final answer? No. We need, okay, we need to multiply, okay, we need to um, get the percentage. Okay, we need to get the percentage increase required. So, kailangan natin i-convert sa percentage. So, ang ating magiging formula, okay, that is the percentage to increase, okay, the shortage of funds 
that will be 1,791 over, okay, ano yung ating market borrowing? That would be 29,952 multiplied by 100. So, that we will get a percentage. Okay, dito yung ating unit I percentage. So, I have, okay, pag kinumpute ko yan, Okay, um, sa calculator, ang makukuha ko po ay 5.98% or approximately that would be 6%. Okay, so this is the solution for question number 7. First, we look for the shortage and then uh, kinonvert natin siya sa percentage. Okay, kung magkano ba yung i-increase natin sa market borrowing para maayos yung shortage of funds ko natin. Okay, so basically, our answer is 6%. Uh, Doon sa ating um, choices, ang correct answer ay letter C. Okay? That will be our correct answer. Okay. Question number okay, For question number 8, we are looking for the approximate ratio of the funds to be arranged through toll and the true market borrowing. So, um, pagko-compare natin yung um, funds na ibibigay or i-allocate para sa toll at market borrowing. Okay, so def uh, basically, ang gagawin lang natin ay hanapin natin yung ratio. So, that would be toll divided by market borrowing. Okay, so the required ratio... The required ratio is equal to your um, toll okay, divided by your market borrowing. So, ano yung ating value ng toll? I have 4,910. My value of my market borrowing is 29,952. And that would give me a ratio of 1 over 6.1. Okay, dinivide ko lang po siya, 29,952 divided by 4,910. Okay, you can uh, compute that manually or sa calculator. Pero again, sabi ko nga, in civil service exam, you cannot use calculator. So, you will do it manually. Okay, so my ratio is 1 is to 6. Okay, hanapin natin sa choices. My correct answer is letter B. Okay.